Welcome back to the Faculty Factory Podcast. I'm Kim Skorupski. I'm the Associate Dean for Faculty Development in the Office of Faculty Development at Johns Hopkins University. In today's fact chat, I thought you might be interested in knowing about how the School of Medicine's Office of Faculty Development at Hopkins works. I know I'm always curious to understand and learn how everyone has their offices. At Hopkins and the School of Medicine, under the Dean, Dean Paul Rothman, we, he has about six or seven vice deans. Well, he also has an executive vice dean, Dr. Landon King. But there are about six or seven vice deans, one of which is Dr. Janice Clements, who is our vice dean for faculty. Now, under Janice Clements' office, she has four arms or four offices, if you will. Office of Diversity and Inclusion, the Office of Part-Time Faculty, the Office of Women in Science and Medicine, and the Office of Faculty Development. The Office of Faculty Development is the largest of her four offices. I've been at Hopkins almost six years now, and when I first came, there was one administrative assistant, and then me. I was hired as a 100% effort assistant dean. My faculty appointment is in geriatric medicine gerontology, but that um, research or any of my involvement in gerontology happens you know, whenever I can get fit that in, like most of you, usually between midnight and 5 a.m. So since over the past six years, Dr. Clements has really grown the Office of Faculty Development quite a bit. Currently, in addition to me, I'm, I'm again, I'm still 100% effort associate dean. There is a program coordinator who is 100% effort, and she's been with us about three years now. And recently moved, well, last year moved into a program coordinator, a higher level staff position. And there is another 100% effort administrative coordinator. So she started about a year ago. So we have two full-time staff positions, an administrative coordinator and a program coordinator, and then me. Then we have a bunch of other deans who are in various uh, percent efforts. So the First one is uh, Dr. Nader Faraday. He is our Senior Associate Dean for Faculty Development. And Dr. Faraday is a professor in anesthesiology and critical care medicine. His value is just immense. He served on our Associate Professor Promotions Committee for a decade or more and is really um, in the know about what it takes for advancement and promotion in the school. So he is our senior associate dean. I think he's around 40% effort. Then Dr. David Usum used to be the section director director for neuroradiology. He's a professor in neuroradiology and has wrote the the textbook in neuroradiology. He is our associate dean for professional development. And Dr. Usum's expertise is in finance and business. He earned an MBA. And so he's, he's been tapped a lot for, um, his financial, um, savvy. So he, he also put together two new courses, relatively new the past couple of years for our faculty that are things like uh, how to build your academic clinical practice, the economics of clinical operations, in addition to doing a lot for mentoring and time management. So he's kind of a, an uber mentor. Associate Dean, who's all things about finance. Then Dr. Ray, and I think he's, I think he's only about 20, 25% effort in the office. Dr. Rachel Levine is an internal medicine and she, I think, is also maybe 20 to 40%. I'm not quite sure, but she, her title is Associate Dean for Faculty Development in Education. So Dr. Levine was really central in putting together some courses that have been in Hopkins for decades now, the foundation and foundations of, t- of teaching and learning, foundations of curriculum development. So she's really an expert in educational scholarship and turning everyday clinical activities into scholarship and is all things education and works really closely with our 
Institute for Excellence in Education. That's another great institute we have that's headed by uh, Dr. Joe Cofrancesco here at Hopkins. So that's, we're pretty good on education as well. Then we have a senior consultant, Dr. Linda Dillon Jones. She came to Hopkins from an organizational development background and developed all of the leadership courses in Hopkins University and the school. So she's been around uh, for a while and is a consultant. I actually, she was the interim assistant dean when I came to Hopkins in 2013. And her forte, again, is in leadership development. So she is really key in our women's programs. I mentioned to you earlier under Dr. Clements, there's an Office of Women in Science and Medicine. Well, we have an associate dean for women, Dr. Barbara Fivush. And she and Linda Dillon Jones work very closely to build two and now three really uh, um, hugely successful women's leadership programs. There's a leadership program for junior women called the Emerging Women's Leadership Program. There is a leadership program for women faculty, for more senior faculty women, usually around the associate or a senior associate professor level some. And then Dr. Fivish recently, just last year, built a new program, the Mary Elizabeth Garrett, named after Hopkins' uh, founding mother. Dr. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Garrett founded the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. It's because of her that we got the money to start the school. But Barbara worked to develop a new, uh, the Mary Elizabeth Garrett Executive Program for Women. So that's for senior women. It's a very small cohort. And so those three women's programs, uh, Linda Dillon Jones works closely with Barbara in the Office of Women in Science and Medicine on those programs. We also work closely with Dr. Jennifer Haythornthwaite, a semi-retired professor of psychology, and her expertise is in mentoring. So Dr. Haythornthwaite developed a master mentor program that's been around for several years. And she and Dave Usom worked really closely on having this university-wide program teaching mentors how to be um, better mentors. I think that's the whole group. Let me recap it. So under our vice dean for faculty, Janice Clements, in the office of faculty, we have a senior associate dean, an associate dean for professional development, an associate dean for faculty development and education. There's me, the associate dean for faculty development. We have the consultant, Dr. Linda Dillon Jones. We have Dr. Jennifer Haythornthwaite, who is our consultant and mentoring. And then we have two full-time, uh, full-time staff people. Now you may be wondering where, uh, promotion and tenure falls. Academic promotions and ten- tenure is overseen by Dr. Janice Clements and those operations, how that handles, we have two school committees that review associate professors and full professors. And those staff who oversee those uh, committee operations are right in actually the Dean's suite. So Dean Paul Rothman had their staff there who overseen, who oversee the operations of both of those promotions committees. But it certainly falls under our vice dean for faculty's responsibilities. We also work really closely with the registrar's office. They keep a lot of our data on faculty. We recently got a new registrar, a school registrar, because our registrar has been around, believe it or not, for 53 or 54 years. So um, our associate dean registrar, Mary Foy, recently retired after 50 plus years, and we just hired a new registrar. And then with that reorganization, we uh, elevated one of the staff people who had been in the registrar's office to our new associate dean for faculty resources. So she's going to be working closely with us on beefing up our faculty data and resources around faculty. So I hope that gives you a pretty good sense of what our, our office of faculty development looks like. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in to Faculty Factory Podcast. The mission of the Faculty Factory is to build and support a community of leaders in faculty development who share tools, resources, wisdom, and encouragement in service to our faculty members, schools, and institutions. We encourage you to go to facultyfactory.org to find out more, get in touch with me, ask me any questions. Maybe you want to be interviewed on the podcast. Thanks for tuning in to Faculty Factory Podcast. We'll see you next time.
The Faculty Factory podcast and website is sponsored by the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine Office of Faculty. For more information, visit facultyfactory.org.